up? My name is Ketchy the Changeling, and you're watching the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 173. I am your host, Norman Sanso. Joining me today is James. I'm old and I shout all the time. I'm 13 years old. Did you know that? Oh, sorry. Hang on. Have to switch off my sarcasm. There you um, go. Also, Hi. also joining us today is Ro. Praise the sun. Yes, and gentlemen, I had too much dogs, too much hours on Dark Souls. Also joining us is Diane. Shut sugar up to you. Oops, sorry, sorry. Name on Skype is confusing. Sugar Dove is my one year married! Woohoo! Yay! Happy anniversary! Woohoo! I'm all grown up now! <laughs> Returning for the fifth time, Kyle. Hey guys, how is everyone doing? Fine, thank you, fine, thank you. And our guest for this week, well, guess why don't you introduce yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Uh, what's up folks? I'm Sketchy, Sketchy the Changeling. I am a recently new MLP reviewer on the YouTube scene, and I review not only episodes of the show, but also issues of the comics. Awesome. James, we got competition here. Quick, take him down. I'll hold him <laughs> to the knife. Nah. Uh-oh, uh-oh. No, nah, no. Nah. Competition is good. I don't, want, I don't want no trouble now. <laughs> nah. We, we need a healthy, competitive uh, kind of environment because, well, it breeds innovation. It breeds more options. And it's one's opinion. If you don't like it, we can just shift to another person until you like it. <laughs> Competition keeps you on your toes. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. But how are you doing, man? Uh, doing real good. Doing real good. Having a good 4th of July. Uh, plan on seeing some fireworks later this evening. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Forget to mention that we are recording on 4th of July. Yay! Uh, Happy America Day! <laughs> America! So true. America! But I Happy how, Blow Stuff Up Day! I wonder how re relevant is th this is going to be because when we publish this, it's going to be what? On Tuesday? And that's going to be on the 14th? So, no, sorry, 7th. So, uh, I don't know, but still, happy 4th to you. I think some people will still have some leftover fireworks. Oh, true that. <laughs> Uh, but still, happy for to whoever's listening to this. But how is everyone else doing? Like, James, how are you doing, man? Um, I'm doing really good, actually. After my friend Fernin left, uh, back, uh, went back to the US uh, after visiting me, I managed to put a dent on the cluster that I have of commissions, managed to finish the Wild West comic, uh, complete the poster for Bronny Scott, and now I am working on a bunch of updates that are going to be coming out next week for Movies Late. So, yeah, work-wise, I'm doing good. Friendship-wise, I'm going good. The only thing that is hurting is the video games. <laughs> I have a <laughs> bunch of them on Steam that I haven't even touched. Uh, oh, but then again, I know that feel, bro. <laughs> no, that right? feels. Like, I, have, I, I think I only have like 15 games. I know there's people that have like 10 times that amount. And I am like, why did you buy so many video games? You will have no life if you try to play all of them. Why buy all the games? I, I beg to differ. I have many games and I still have a life, allegedly. <laughs> right, but allegedly. The, yeah. You're good at playing those games. That's the thing, is that... I'm not. You don't... Oh, come on. I'm really sure that you don't die 50 times in the first level. Jeez, have, have, you play, have, you, have you played Dark Souls yet? You will die 50 times in the opening credits. <laughs> I don't want to play that video game. I look at it and I am like, this is World of Warcraft. This is going to suck my life and it's never going to get me out. And my friends are going to find me with my hands no, I'm not gonna on the controller, my eyes bloodshot, <laughs> solidified against my chair. Uh, oh no. See, but, for me, when it comes to games, I normally play fighters, a little bit of adventure, a little bit of JRPGs. Mm. And yeah, just t try to mix it up, but it's mainly fighters. Well, sketchy, you're my type of guy. Favorite? What's your favorite fighting game? At the moment, uh, Mortal Kombat, because like the series kind of kind of runs in my blood. <laughs> oh, that's good. But right now, I'm getting really sucked into Blaze Blue. Oh, any oh, fighter. Oh, Blaze Blue is a good game series. That is a good game series. Yeah, um, Chrono Phantasma Extend just came out. Have you played Guilty Gear Exert? I wish I did, but I don't own a PlayStation. Oh. Wait, is it exclusive on the PlayStation only? Yeah. Well, although, actually, my roommate has XR, and I played it on his system a couple times. Mm. 
it's a fun game. It's been what almost a decade since it came out, since the last one came out. So I don't still need to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, Ro, how are you doing, man? Slowly but surely, finally in back into the groove, drawing my comics, sketches, all that stuff. Did an art trade, gaming, the usual, the usual. Mm, all right, cool, 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 cool. Man, I need to get in the groove at my comics. Oh, the drawings, the drawings must continue on. So you do drawings too. You know, I, I need to, I need to ask everyone because it's kind of a tradition on the show. So anywho, sugar anniversary, yes. Yay! Any plans? We went out. We went out for dinner and we did lots of shopping and I got a satchel finally and we got cool stuff and then we went to see the minions <laughs> and then we came home and snuggled up in bed and fell asleep. Oh, that's so cute. Aww. And Kyle, what and- you <laughs> Well, what I did was not snuggle up myself and go to sleep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> although the idea was tempting at some points. <laughs> wow. Yeah, uh, but moving on very softly from that, uh, that expose, um, <laughs> apart from playing a few games, having a few friends around last night, uh, I've been off work, so it's given me the opportunity to work on a feature film script I've been trying to do, which has been really good fun. And uh, recording more episodes of Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes on the High on Bronies YouTube channel. Ah. Oh, we could live interview Amy, she's coming over tonight. Oh, wow. <laughs> That'd okay, cool. right, yeah. I have no questions. I'll have to prepare questions there. <laughs> oh, uh, sure, we can improvise. She'll love it. Uh, uh, well, talk, talking about interviewing, we got our own guest here, Sketchy. So, Sketchy, first question is, well, the important four is, uh, favorite character? Favorite character? AJ, hands down. Applejack all day, every day. No Apple questions Jack. asked. Thank you, and number one. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Why Applejack? I think she serves as like, okay, this is going to be a weird analogy, but stick with me here, okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Imagine the main six as office supplies, <laughs> all right? Okay. Work with me on this. Work with me on this. AJ is the stapler because she holds things together, but she's not used every day. Uh, true. <laughs> that is like, she's kind of that anchor that holds everybody down. The voice of reason. All right. right. That, that is a weird analogy, but it works. It works. So, and some of her dialogue is the funniest in the show. So. Also true. What about episodes? Episodes, 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 episodes. Uh, all-time favorite, like out of all the 100 plus episodes, I gotta give it to Canterlot Wedding. Like, oh, that one. I remember like when I first got into the show, it was summer 2012, so it was between seasons two and three. The show showed up in my Netflix suggestions, and I was like, <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna give this. I'm gonna give this five episodes to impress me. I was hooked on episode one. <laughs> so I was trying to, when I found out when season, when season three was coming out, I was trying to get the two seasons done before, um, season three came out. And with the way I watch shows, like, I just cannot marathon more than ten episodes of a show. <laughs> so it took, I was able to do it. And once I got to Cantalot Wedding, like, like, my brain shut down from how awesome it was. Like, it was, like, This Day Aria was, like, the best song in the series. Like, everything about that episode, it was just, like, ugh. Like, looking looking back on it, yeah, it definitely had some flaws. Mm-hmm. But, like, the amount of good stuff about it just overwhelmed everything else. All right, cool, cool. Well, funny thing is, the third question was going to be, how did you become a fan of the show? Well, we kind of know that now. And, well, the last one is going well, to be... Yeah, sorry. It kind of goes, it kind of goes a little bit farther than that, Ooh. actually. Um, my first viewing of the show was around spring of 2012, like not too long after season two ended because I was catching up with an old friend of mine from elementary school and he, we were talking about what shows we've been getting into. And then he brought up My Little Pony and I was surprised because like with the way he is, I thought that MLP was going to be the last show that he'd be into. So, it kind of surprised me, so I asked him, like, really? Like, like I, I had nothing against um the show itself, but I was just, like, surprised at that he liked it. So he's like, yeah, yeah, it was really good. It's a really good story, like, and I think that you would love it. I'm like, eh, maybe, maybe not. So I was just um browsing through the TV one time, and uh, I caught three episodes of MLP in isolation. I think they were Hearts and Hooves Day. Mm-hmm. Baby Cakes, and Winter Wrap-Up. So 
at that point, I thought the show was kind of cool, but I didn't really want, I didn't really feel like investing my time into it until it showed up in my Netflix suggestions. I was like, okay, well, I got Netflix now, so <laughs> I guess I have no excuse. <laughs> Let's give this a shot. And that's how they trapped you. Uh, yep, that's how that, that Netflix. They always get in here. Yeah, but the first premiere pilot episode was awesome too. So no fault to no fault on them for that. Yeah, yeah. So last question is going to be: What do your family and friends think about your love for sit show? Uh they're actually really cool with it. Um, my parents know that I'm that I'm doing the YouTube thing. Um, and they're actually really supportive of it. Like, um especially my dad and uh when it came to telling them that I liked the show way back when I first started watching it they like they they were really accepting of it because they weren't really surprised <laughs> because they knew that cuz they knew that I had like a really big passion for cartoons and I watched like whatever regardless of like demographic mm-hmm. and whatnot so they weren't particularly surprised and like I did show my mom a couple of episodes too. <laughs> uh, what did she think about it? The episodes that I showed her were Rarity Takes Manhattan and Inspiration Manifestation. All right. And like, she kind of has a so-so opinion on Rarity because of those episodes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my, and that's my fault because like Rarity's like my second favorite character, like right behind Applejack. So it's like, oh, uh, I should have done a better job. Oh uh, well, probably Sonic Rain Boom or Art of the Dress. If you show your mom Sonic Rainbow, she's going to definitely hate Rarity. That is the worst episode to show. Yeah, that's the worst episode to show somebody like, hey, you, hey, if you want to like Rarity, you should watch this episode. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> That is, no, that is not a, no. a good idea. Show her, show her student for success. That is a much better episode. That or Sweet and Elite. Yeah, Sweet and Elite is great too, yeah. I wasn't thinking about um, making them like Rarity or anything like that. I was just more thinking of, hey, this is an awesome show. Look at this awesome scene. That's about it in my mind. But eh, probably if you want to get them stuck onto a character, that's the best way. If that's the case, I show her Ticketmaster. (laughs) No, not Ticketmaster. um, Lesson Zero. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yes. Lesson Zero was good. Lesson Zero was good. Like, I was indifferent to Twilight leading up to that episode. (laughs) Twilight was... Well, she was... Basically, book, book pony. Yeah, like, yeah. before that episode came out, I was like, yeah, she's there. Yeah. And then when I saw the episode, I was like, oh, I like this girl. <laughs> yeah, she's insane. Yeah, Twilight, you have no conflicts. Can you please do something in the... Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Hi, girls! <laughs> yep, too much, too much. So, I used to hate Twilight, but it only dawned on me recently. The reason I hate Twilight is because I'm so much like Twilight. I'm like, oh, oh gosh, I'm insane. What was I thinking? <coughs> wow. So anyway, Sketch, we, we need, I need to know personally, why a changeling OC? Why a changeling OC? That's an interesting story. Um, remember that friend I told you about? Mm-hmm. Well, um, around April of 2013, like it was a couple weeks before my birthday, and he got this idea to write a fanfic, right? Mm -hmm. And he thought he could approach me and we could work on it together because I had already already had experience writing my own original stories for comics and stuff. So he thought that with the two of us together, we'd be able to make a good story. And um, we had fun while we were writing it, but looking back on it now... I'm like, whenever, whenever it gets a lot of heat, I'm thinking like, why are people reading this story? Like, why are we even doing this? So, um, after that story was written, we just, we shared an account. And after the story was finished, we decided to split, we decided to split and, um, write our own stuff. So the name that I changed it to was Sketchy Unicorn at the time. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward to, Again, my birthday in 2014, and um, I just decided to change it to Sketchy Changeling for, like, no reason. And so once I got to the point where I felt like I wanted to start the whole YouTube thing, I figured that I just used my fin fiction name because, like, it already lended itself to a unique OC species. So, you know, I was like, you know, why the hell not? Keep it consistent. All right, all right. I mean, that's an interesting way. I, I thought the story would be more in depth. Like, 
I don't know what I'm thinking in my head right now. It could be more espionage. I don't know why I'm thinking that. <laughs> so um, you said you started off as a filmfic writer, and looking at your film account, you have eleven stories, and some of them are complete, and most of them are ongoing. So, what inspired you to write? Uh just the just the idea of making people happy with my stories because um the the majority of the stories that I write are comedy and comedy when it comes to media is my favorite genre so like uh writing down like stuff to make people laugh and telling a good story on top of that I don't know it's just like writing a story that I'm especially one that I'm really passionate about it feels a fire in me I know that sounds really cliche but <laughs> But that's that's what it does, honestly. And like, there are some times where like I will put a joke in a chapter, and I'm like, oh my god, this joke <laughs> is so bad. Like, and I consider like cutting it out. Then I get a comment saying that they were dying of laughter when they read that joke, and I'm like, huh. Well, yeah, I do understand what you mean. Sometimes you have an idea and you need to write it down. I, I think Kyle here understands that fully well, since he's an aspire. He, you're a writer, right, Kyle? Yeah, I, yeah, no, I mean, I do all sorts of writing. I mean, I can certainly identify with the the struggles and the fun parts of having to write, you know, whatever project that happens to be. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, if, I don't even know where to start, really. <laughs> yeah, I, I can just imagine, like, I have this one punchline, but the whole setup needs to be there. So what do you do? You write a 21-issue uh, film fic just to get to the punchline, then boom! Punchline happens, everybody laughs. Yeah, there are times where you, there are times where you really, really have to plan ahead, because like um, like this one story that I have going is uh, where two of the major characters are Trixie and Queen Chrysalis. Weird pairing, but it makes sense in the story. But um, there was a joke that um, was building up for a couple of chapters, and. I, like when I dropped the joke, like it, it was a modest payoff. Uh, was it hit thy neighbor? Yeah. Not bad. It's what you got six hundred and seventeen thumbs up. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, although the story where I really like hit my stride was my overbearing aunt, which I published December of twenty thirteen. Like I pub- like I put out the first. Like I had written um two stories on my own prior to that, and so. I had the idea for my overbearing aunt, and then I write the first chapter, publish it right before I go to bed. I wake up the next morning and I see so many notifications, like <laughs> it, it, like I, I like followers, favorites, comments. Like I had bumped up to like over 150 followers <laughs> in in a period of 24 hours, and I'm like, whoa, like this is crazy. Oh, congratulations. I, I'm guessing people like the story and just spread it out. I guess so. So also I'm looking at most of your cover art and the art is done by you, right? Yeah, it's done by me. Ah. An artist also, a person of many talents. That's awesome. So what do you use for drawing? Uh, Well, I use a Wacom bamboo tablet. Um... Had it for about two years now, and the program that I use is a uh, Paint Tool Sci. And then for added effects like gradients and stuff like that, I would use Photoshop. Hmm. All right, Photoshop, Photo, Sci, and wow, that's a rare com- combo. Any of you guys? Not really? There is a there is a lot of people that that do combine. Yeah, there are a lot of people that Photoshop. combine both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like there are some like specific features that Photoshop has like text and stuff like that 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 side doesn't accommodate for so you use photoshop to make up for like all that extra pizzazz Mm -hmm. also uh, sai has uh like sai is better for many artists is better for inking uh and i see a lot of yes oh my god for doing the inks and all that because it's very dynamic uh, that way and then they do the shading and the background or they do the coloring and the background or or just the background with uh, with photoshop Hmm. Yep. Yeah, because like I see people doing inking in Photoshop, and I'm like, "How do you do this?" Like, magic. <laughs> like, maybe I've been, maybe I've been, 
<laughs> Maybe I've been spoiled yeah. by the stabilizer. <laughs> James. <laughs> it's not good, it's not nice, it's not easy, and it hurts. My, I think I, I developed carpenter tunnel syndrome just from trying to ink with Photoshop. It's the most uncomfortable thing in the world. But it's what I'm using. Why would you so. put yourself through that, though? <laughs> That because I am not a smart person, and I usually just throw myself against a problem until it stops being a problem. So, yeah. why do you hate yourself? <laughs> because I'm tormented and tortured and dark. I'm Batman. <laughs> uh, well, talking about Batman and his current game, Arkham Knight, um, Ubisoft, the game developer, uh, they seem to be rocking out ponies in their Ubisoft headquarters in Quebec. And if you take a look, see. In- oh yeah, but like speaking of um, speaking of rock and ponies, I saw um Ted two last no. night, and um, cause uh, I cause I remember in the first movie, there were uh Ted offhandedly mentioned that Hasbro was the company that manufactured him. So, come come this movie, mm-hmm. where Hasbro is one of the like. Like a Hasbro executive is like a secondary antagonist, and like you, you see Hasbro's company, and you see like so many background references to My Little Pony. Like they, they open a door and leave a meeting room, and as the door is closing, you see Equestria Girl, and then these two characters are talking, and in the background you see a glass case of MLP dolls, and you can you can clearly see Maniac in the back, and then there's a scene at New York Comic Con where like. You see like a bunch of MLP merch too, and like there like there's an office where there's a giant Pinkie Pie in the back, and then that another giant Pinkie Pie appears at the New York Comic Con scene, and someone throws it at someone else because like there's a huge fight that breaks out. It's like, oh my, God. like I was the only person in the theater laughing at that. Oh wow, oh that's not a good Talk sign. About product placement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Seth MacFarlane, what are you doing? Oh wow, but uh, okay. How was? I mean, how like, was, uh, uh, how was Mark Wahlberg in it? He was good. He was good. Um, see, like, I don't want to spoil anything, don't but spoil um, it, but I'm glad to yeah. hear that. I am a huge fan of Marky Mark. <laughs> I don't want to hear. Yeah. Let's just say stuff. that he goes. He goes through his own arc. He like just because the movie is more about Ted doesn't mean that he's left by the wayside. He he's still going through his own stuff. Oh, I'm I'm glad to and hear that. That's the most that I can say. When Seth MacFarlane makes a movie, he makes it all about <laughs> himself. Well, he's the voice of Ted when he's a when he's a grown up. More people don't remember that the voice of Ted in the first movie, when Ted first comes to life, that is Tarak Strong. Hmm, that's true. Yeah, I'm surprise. That's true. That's true. And mm-hmm. because Seth MacFarlane and Tarak Strong are very good are very good friends. Mm-hmm. So about Tara Strong. Isn't Tara? Is it? Is it Tara Strong? Is like. Tara Strong is yeah, everybody. That's true. Tara, Tara Strong is absolutely everything from your childhood. <laughs> so true. Name it, and it was voiced by. <laughs> oh, her. but talking about Tara, right? There's this thing on the Beth. What was this called? The BEFTA Awards. They're doing uh, their fourth annual BEFTA Voice Acting Awards, and well, the nominees are in, and it seems that most of the ponies are in. Like you got who here? Let's see. You got Tabitha Saint Germain and Tara Strong. Uh, uh, we are talking about the Behind the Boys Actor Awards. We are not talking about the oh, yeah. British Academy of Films and Television oh, really? Arts. It's yeah, not the BAFTAs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. BAFTAs are. Like I'm, I'm looking at the article right now. Hmm. And I'm like, those those words, those letters do not make well, words. Well, I derp. <laughs> yeah, but James, you you know more about this. So why don't you take over, man? Uh, yeah, well, I am very happy that uh, they do have a series of awards dedicated to voice actors because there is no other, no, there is no bigger unsung hero in the animated in the animated uh, industry other than the voice actors and the animators. So yeah, I think these the, days, yeah. I think these days, the animation industry as a whole has been getting a lot more recognition. Like since like 2010 mm-hmm. came around. I think people have been starting to show more appreciation for the medium. And as an animation fan, I can't be any happier. Mm -hmm. VAs have always been shunned to the side unless they have been celebrities. And even with that, sometimes it takes a lot of, a lot of effort to, to have them recognized. Like from what I remember, only the Saturn awards, which are the, 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 the series of awards that, uh, 
Award, uh, Science Fiction, Fantasy, Horror, Movies, all that. They are the only awards that have given uh, praise to voice actors at the same ta- at the same level as live action actors. Like, I remember the last time they awarded one was uh, Ellen DeGeneres for her voice acting in Finding mm-hmm. Nemo. They gave her an award, but no other uh, award on the planet has done this. And these guys, the, the Behind the Voice Actors Awards, have pretty much put every single BA of MLP in it. Like, John Delancey is nominated, Andrea Liefman is nominated, David St. Germain. I mean, uh, it just goes to show how much effort they put into their work, uh-huh, you know? That's true. Yeah, Kathy, Kathy Weiss, like, is also nominated. Weird <laughs> Old Jankovic is nominated for Best Guest uh, Vocal Performance. Oh, on but you have to series. see who he's uh, faced with, because, uh, uh, okay, there's also Andrew Francis as Harry Evans. Like, mm, not really. Andrew Francis is cool, but Shining Armor is not that popular. And you got what? Bill... Speak for yourself. Know, he's awesome, but you got what, Bill? He's all, he's all right. He's a, he, he's he's all right. Yeah. Like I kind of relate to him because I, I'm because like I'm the big brother. So like, although like um, how well the age difference between him and Twilight, I think it's bigger than the age difference between me and my younger sibling. Hmm. Well, like I was saying, there's also other people like Bill right now as Flint from GI Joe. He's he guest starred in Community. You got John DiMaggio as Bender in The Simpsons, and um, who else? Tim Curry, and he voices in yeah, Over the Hedge. Nigel Thornberry. Wait, 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 wait! Back up, back up, back up! Did you say Bender in The Simpsons? Yes. Guess, guess rules. Oh wait, oh, I right, didn't even right. that episode. Oh, oh okay. Come on. Yeah, it was a, it was the Futurama a Simpsons yeah. crossover that they did. Yeah, I didn't yeah. see that one yet. I haven't seen two. And yeah. you got also. But you, but you see, you are you are missing one point what? here, Norman. The point is not win. The point is to be recognized and just be nominated right. counts. There are there are a lot of movies that have been nominated to a lot of awards and they never mm-hmm, won. True. And yet they have gotten more recognition than than the movies that actually won. Hell, a Shawshank Redemption was nominated to seven Oscars and never won any. And people remember yeah, that movie even, more than any other of those other movies that won that year. Yeah, just the just the fact that you got recognized by um by some by a such a prestigious organization speaks volumes for um the quality of your work. <laughs> Granted, when it comes to the when it comes to the Academy, they're kind of biased towards Disney when it comes to best film. But um, <laughs> <laughs> Disney or Pixar. Like when I saw when I. Like when I saw the reasons why Frozen was voted, like like half the people who voted oh, for God, Frozen God. to win the Oscar, they voted for Frozen because they that was the only nominee that they Aww. watched. Like, can we get some more informed people on the voting committee, it's please? True. But you know, I, I have to say one thing because uh, in one of the nom- nominees for best male lead vocal performance in a television series for comedy and musical, they got. Uh, Dr. Eggman from Sonic Boom. And I just love his voice, his role. He's just so awesome. I just like it. I know, right? But he's... I mean, there's a reason why... There's a reason why they didn't replace him when they replaced everybody else. No, uh, they did replace Sonic, but... Yeah, oh, they, they did? did replace Sonic, yeah, they replaced Sonic. That was a while back, so they bring it, him over. I don't think they replaced Eggman, though. Yeah, I don't think they replaced Eggman, though. I think they kept the same guy. Well, they kept the same guy after his, the, after the original one passed away. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that, that's what counts, is to be recognized, to be among the nominees. Mm-hmm, that is true. Uh, although, I am I am over here just rooting for Tabitha to win, because she voices best, of course. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I, 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 love ta- I love Tara, I really do, but, like, I think... Like the thing, the thing that Tabitha has over Tara is that Tabitha has more range. Like, um, when you hear Tara Strong's voice, you know immediately that's Tara Strong. But yes. Tabitha has enough range that she can differentiate her voice to fit different characters. Like when, like, I knew she was voicing Rarity and Luna, but when I was first getting to the show and I found out that she also voiced Granny <laughs> Smith, I was like, wait, what? Nah. Yeah. And 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 Mrs. Cake and one of the pound cakes. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Philomena and the gravy float. <laughs> There's a lot that she did. Insane. I think she was in Death Note, but don't quote me on that. I think that Katie Weiss like was in uh, Death Note actually. 
I think she was. I'm not. I'm not entirely I sure. I think Pinky's. I think Pinky's singing voice played Misa. I think. Hmm, probably this. Uh, that's Kasumi Kasumi Evans or no? Kasumi Evans is the singing voice for Shannon Kent. Like, I think. Um, Shannon Kent. Yes, <coughs> Shannon Kent is the singing voice of Pinky Pie. Mm. Now I feel like I have to fact check this. <laughs> uh, but while you fact check, <laughs> Wikipedia. While you fact check that, I'm gonna bring it back to Ubisoft because, well, uh, the HQ has pixel art on them and Rainbow Dash is on their building, so that's cool. It's it's absolutely it's absolutely great, but is the is the one smart decision Ubisoft have made in the last two years? So let's not give them too much credit. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, they have the, they they decided to make a sequel. They decided to make a sequel to the South Park oh, game. True so that. True that. That's a good decision. Really? Yeah, they were they revealed that E three this year. It's called the the fractured <laughs> butthole. <laughs> Sounds South Park enough it is, to me. It is. Uh, and B U B U T space W H O L E. And if I do remember right, this time instead of going for the D and D kind of vibe, they're going for more superhero with the coon. Uh, yeah, like that. That really um surprised me because like they're they like they they sell you on the whole um. Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones mm-hmm. type of thing, and then you see Professor Chaos, and I'm like, wait, 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 what? Cool and friends, and then I see them change into the superhero outfits, and I'm like, oh my god, like, yeah, like I'm just waiting for all the meta references. Like they even had meta references in the trailer. Like, um, they were like, wait, we're playing this game again? That was barely an RPG, Kyle. The combat sucked. We're gonna do it better, and we're gonna aim for no less than a 9.5 on Gamespot. Oh, that's so meta. Oh, that's so meta. Wow. So much wall breaking yep, here. That's true. I think we're having fun with it. Yep, that's what that happens. is true. That is true. 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 And <laughs> well, you know, the, I I watched the South Park episode featuring the coon, and I can, just can't wait to see um, the coon's best friend. You know. Are you talking about? Are you talking about the the episode where BP summons Cthulhu <laughs> by yes, drilling yes. into the moon? Yeah, yeah the, 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 those are you talking about the trilogy? Yeah, yeah, the Coon trilogy. Th- those episodes are brilliant. Yeah, I just can't wait. We're Very sorry. Crunch. We're sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, my favorite guy is Mintberry Crunch. Mintberry <laughs> Crunch all day. Mintberry Crunch. Mintberry Crunch. With the power of oh. berries. Oh. Like, oh, if he's an assist character, I cannot wait. He better be an assist character. Uh, I, I just, I just can't wait here too, man, because, well, video games. Uh, but you can watch all that on YouTube. Like, the whole trailer announcement is, is all on YouTube if you want to take a look, see. Talking about YouTube. Sketchy, you're on YouTube, right? Of course. How did you start the idea for this one on the YouTubes? Like, this was done on November? Something like that? Uh, how did I start? Like, wait, when did I get my start? Well, basically, the very beginning. The very beginning. Um, I started uh, getting a little bit interested in the whole YouTube thing around late August, I believe, because, like, uh, discussing, like, media was always something that really interested me. Like, I've been watching, like, movie reviews and game reviews since I was, like, in middle school when I was, like, 12, 13 years old. So it was always something that I really liked doing. Like, I mean, like whenever I... um. I would leave the movie theater when I went out to watch a movie with the family. I would, like, bombard them with questions. I'm like, what do you think about this? What would you think about that? Da, 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 da. And, like, I just like the movie. Why are you asking me all these questions? <laughs> so I figured that YouTube would be a good platform for, like, sharing opinions, discussing thoughts. And um, so I decided to design the, design my character and then get everything, like, put everything together and I had like a plan, like my first, uh, comic book review would be for, would, was the, uh, the annual, the 2014 annual, the Power Ponies mm-hmm. comic. Hey, hey. So that was my, fir- yeah, that was my first comic review. How did it felt? Like, I remember our time when we started to do reviews. It was a rocky start, but hey, we had fun. How about you? What, what's your point of view with this? For me, I thought it was, uh, it was a good enough start. Um, I wouldn't say rocky, but slow. Mm-hmm. Definitely slow. Um, I was, st- like, I had good editing knowledge. 
I had the art knowledge to putting everything together. But um, the one thing that I managed to overlook was sound quality. So around, yeah, around December, I got a better ah. mic, though. Well, everybody has to start somewhere. If you listen to this show's first episode, well, maybe second, it sounds crappy. I admit that. <laughs> it took me a while to get a better mic. But hey, I live and learn. But hey, uh, at least you got to start there. So you started off with the comics. And I see that you also did a few comics after that. And you went to the movies and then seasons. What made you jump into episode reviews? Episode reviews were something that I was planning on doing from from the from the get go. Um, although, like, I know the comics were what, what I was going to be known for for the first couple of months because of when I decided to start. I think uh, my first taste of reviewing like uh, the show or the episodes was when I did the Rainbow Rocks review, and I had uh, I decided to wait until I had the movie on DVD because like when it comes to a movie I would have to like rewind and like look at certain parts and stuff like that and I just like have I just like having a movie in a physical format can understand that can understand that plus I got a refund because um the first run of the DVDs for Rainbow Rocks had this glitch where um if you played it from the main menu uh, they would show scene six before scene five. Wow. So in order for the movie to play, play properly, you had to um go to the scene selection and click scene one and start the movie from there. So I ended up getting like a, a refund. That's just derp. That's a big derp. So even if the so even if the movie did end up sucking, <laughs> I would have my money back. So. <laughs> well, it didn't, right? 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 No, nah, no, nah, that was a major improvement over the first one. So, like, now that the next one is coming out, I'm actually looking forward to it. September 26th, that's when it's coming out. I, I can't wait. This year? Yep, this year. Okay. And this- I'll probably, I'll probably wait for the DVD for, DVD for this one too. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing also with that one, because, uh, Equestria Games is coming out on the Discovery Family channel. So, I'm not sure if it's going to be on a theatrical release. Oh, well, I'm sure DVD will come out. If the first two made money, the third one sure hell is going to make more. So. Yeah, they definitely got, cause like, Shout Factory definitely makes a lot of revenue over the, um, DVD sales. Mm-hmm. Like, the licensing would bring in back the money. So, yeah, they would do it. I don't want to touch on controversial subjects. So, I'm going to just, let's see if I can walk into this mm-hmm. one without being too touchy. Um, when it comes to the reviewing and all that, well, do you think is the point to stop? Where do you think is the point where, where you go? Okay, I'm reading too much into this. This is this is something that like there is reviewing and then there is nitpicking. Where where do you think that uh, that line uh, is? Like the line between reviewing and nitpicking. Yeah. Um. Hmm. It's definitely a hard one to um define. Like sometimes uh when I think of something that I had a problem with, I would um stop and think, okay, will the average um view would the average viewer find issue with this? Like is it is it something that's just within me or is it something that someone else could um could see, you know? And like if it is a nitpick, then I would include it in the review and play it off with humor. For example, I plan on making a joke about Moon Dancer's eyebrows in this in for the review for today's episode. <laughs> that is, is the, my good sir. That is a nitpick, my good sir. <laughs> yeah, but I'm gonna like when you play it off with humor, it sounds more like a joke. Oh, true that, true that. Like you did when uh, mentioning it made me think about it and make me giggle. And yeah, it's a nitpick. It doesn't really spoil the character, but yeah, it's a nitpick. And joining it with humor, it works. So I'm guessing that's most of your style? Uh, I tend to sprinkle a little bit of humor into my reviews because, like, I don't want to bore anybody, you know? Hmm. And um, so I would sometimes have, like, a little annotation. Like, I remember um, when I did the review for Lost Treasure of Griffinstone, and I said, okay, Gilda's back. Now all the people who wanted her back can shut up. <laughs> and then I put, like, I, I put a little annotation said that, that said, um, says the guy that's holding out for Chrysalis to come back. (laughs) 
So I called I called myself out on my own hypocrisy. <laughs> you want Crystalis to come back? Watch the comics. Uh... <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Hell yeah! Like I oh. love the comics to death. I'm. That's part of the reason why I love the comics so much. Like oh. I'm looking forward to what Katie and Andy have planned because they said they have plans for her. So oh. I'm looking forward Something... to that. Something that usually happens is that when they have a plan for the comics, they that's because Hasbro doesn't have a plan for the characters in the show. So most likely we will not see Chrysalis again in the show. Although here's hoping. Well, some, also, well, someone's got a plan. Oh, well, true. Day. Someone's got true a plan. Day. So we saw that one changeling alone in the episode 100. <laughs> what was he doing there? Yeah, that he was, was my there cousin. For the food. Oh, he was. He was uh, trying out this acting gig, and it's it's working out pretty well for him. I'm, I I'm proud. I don't believe you. I think that's you. You went there. You auditioned. And no, I no. I don't go anywhere without my orange hat and my orange sweater. I don't go anywhere without those. Two you things. went there. They say take it off, and then you felt naked and took the money and ran. But <laughs> no, no I'm I'm not. Naked. <laughs> and plus, you can notice that he has a wider head than I do. My head is more round. <laughs> oh, true that. True that. Uh, change the links. They're so confusing. It's hard to tell. Plus, plus, I would, I would be desperately trying to get a seat next to Princess Luna because <laughs> I'm that thirsty. Oh my! Uh, oh my! <clears throat> so, what goes into the process of making an episode for you, uh, an episode review for you, or any episode? It's a similar process with um any video that I do. Like, uh, if I would, like for a review, I would either read the comic or watch the episode, depending on what it is, and then I would um write down notes of my initial impressions. And then um I would go I would go back and look at some parts that I liked or didn't like to um make sure I feel that same way. And then um I would write I would write the review up and once I have the script done, I go back to either the episode or the comic and See, I read the comics on my iPad. I get them off of iTunes. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the comic reviews, I go over the script and I screenshot pa uh, panels that are relevant to what I'm saying. And similarly with the episode reviews, once the uh, the stream the streaming version is out on YouTube, I go ahead and download that on Clip Converter, and then I uh, pick out parts that are um. Relevant to whatever I'm saying in the script. Mm, all right. Obviously, you said you uh, got a copy of the show and to your review. So I may cut this out, not depending on your answer. But how how does Hasbro look on this? Like, do they know? Like, do, have you gotten like, hey, you're using content? Here's our ad. Do they do that to you? Um, no, I haven't gotten hit with the whole ad thing. Plus, it helps that I buy my um comics legally because like i pre like what i do is that i pre-order them on itunes and then they would actually come out at 11 p.m oh, wow. the day before the issue was supposed to come out oh wow that's cool no, but <laughs> mostly for so in some cases yeah so in some cases i would read it before like before i go to bed <laughs> oh well that's what i do too but i have to download it via comiXology no, but for episodes like with episodes sometimes uh, they are very iffy on it oh right 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 um, well, uh, the way I format my episode reviews, like, I have, like, a little, uh, a little window, uh, like, mm -hmm. right next to my character, and it's, like, a little blobby type of, uh, window, and, um, not only would I flip the image, uh. but I would, I would also put it in that window so that it looks like something else. It's not, mm -hmm. like, a, it doesn't look like actual footage. Yeah, I understand. I I seen it. I seen it. Then sometimes it's really hard just for content creators, like reviewers mostly, just to get content out there so people could just you know, if you want to know what we think, here it is, and go buy the yeah. episode on iTunes or whatever, wherever you got them. So yeah, that automatic <laughs> I was really robot worried too. system, that automatic robot system is very touchy. Mm -hmm. They will even identify. I was really worried frames. about. Yeah, I was definitely worried about it when I did my Rainbow Rocks review because that was my first review of actual um video material, but um it went over well, so I just did the same thing when I got to my episode reviews. Like, I mean, yeah, this is what works. Don't tempt fate, don't change it, just keep it the way it is. Yeah. I I do we we record with Silver too and he said that oh, he got a hit, so well, he doesn't really care because he does support the show 
And if Hasbro wants to do that, that's his way of supporting the show. Yeah. It's definitely like a slippery slope that we have to be mindful of. Yeah. I have a, I have another question to kind of complement the question that, that I had before about when reviewing sure. is way too much. Um, uh, lately, well, lately, there's been a few cases of uh, reviewers who are, who got burnout, who got tired mm-hmm. uh, and sick and tired of like, uh, either the show, the fandom, both things or something else completely different. Um, what would you recommend no, uh, to not reach that level of burnout? Like to, to avoid getting sick of something that starts as something that is meant to be fun and enjoyable. But that you do it so much, you end up getting just, I don't have the energy to deal with this anymore. Well, um, first of all, you gotta be passionate about it. Like, do, like, you gotta, you gotta stop, like, if you ever get that feeling where you're burned, where you're feeling, you're getting to that point, you gotta stop and think, like, at this point in time, am I doing it because I love doing it? Or am I doing it because I feel like I have to? Because, like, um, I'm a fan of Tommy Oliver. But, um, he pretty much said that, um, reviewing wasn't something that he was passionate about. And he wanted to, as a creator, he wanted to move on to other things. So, I mean, if he's not feeling passionate about it, then eventually it's going to, like, the people who really love your content are going to notice. Because, like, like, my belief is that if you don't put um, passion into something that you're creating, the people who really, really love your work are going to be the first people to notice. And then if you keep, if it keeps going on, then the casual viewers are going to notice it. And then it'll get to a point where even the fans are wondering why you're even doing it anymore if you don't even love doing it. That's and a very I'll, good point, and that is a very good yeah. word of advice. Then there's, then, there's a, then there's also the point of then, because, like, it happens... Everywhere and every fandom, every group of people where you say something and see, like, it's one thing to to, to disagree with someone, but then there are those people who take it to that, to that level. And we all know what that level is. Like, for example, um, uh, from the get go from in my, uh, in my YouTube quote unquote career, I make a couple jabs at Pinkie Pie every now and, and every now and again. And I made it, I made it known that she was my least favorite character. And, um, I made, and like throughout my videos, I would make a couple of jokes at her expense. And it led to people wondering why I didn't like her. And they've been asking me, Hey, why don't you like Pinkie Pie? Why don't you like Pinkie Pie? So I was like, you know, I'm going to make a video about that. And so like I scripted it out. I presented all my cases. And like the thing is, I made sure not to come off as though I was angry. I don't hate her. I dislike her. And, like, few people tend to see the difference between the two because I'm definitely open to liking her, but that all depends on her future portrayals in the show from Season 5 onward. Because, like, I mean, if it can happen with the CMC (laughs) where I couldn't stand them in Season 1 and then Season 4 comes around and I love them now, then it can happen with her. Right now, it hasn't yet, but, like, as of now, these are the reasons why I don't particularly hold her in high esteem. And so, um, that, that, that video came out early in my career, so it got a, I didn't, it didn't get that much attention. But once I did my moment with Dr. Wolf, and then my popularity, like, skyrocketed comparatively, atten- like, particular attention, was brought to that vi- particular video. And um there was this one guy that um not only took shots at me for not liking Pinky, they even went so far as to reply to other people and like take shots at them like for even acknowledging my opinion. Like there was like one person said that she's my favorite character, but I can see where you're coming from with your criticisms. So even though the guy said that Pinky was his favorite character, this uh other dude just comes in and just like takes shots at him. Like, <laughs> did you not read the part where he said that he li- like? It really just baffles me. Like, it, it, like it turns then, into a, a a war between people that like see your point and people that don't see your point. 
Yeah, and then I got like anon like I I get like angry anonymous asks on Tumblr and like <laughs> judging from like judging from um judging from the words that he uses like the, like he uses the word toxic a lot <laughs> like as though as though I'm a disease <laughs> and and you oh. like oh like if you go if you go to the doctor and they check you like oh you're tested positive for sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But like that that's that's that that's what that's the kind of impression that he that, that he was giving off. And he's like he said that like for some reason I hate happy characters <laughs> even though there are other happy characters besides her and that I hate people who smile and I'm like No. Like, uh, for, like, Diana, like since like, you have reviewer blood in your stream, <laughs> I'm sorry, you're gonna turn into a brony analyst. Oh right no. Now. <laughs> no! Oh. See, cause like, but, but like now that it's gotten to that level where he's like making all these ridiculous claims, I know not to take it seriously, mm. you know, because it's like, okay, like, and looking at like, and like, I've had, I've had, um, other, um, people that I've been chatting with on the YouTube scene talk to me about that one particular person. And like, even when someone makes the slightest criticism about, um, Pinky, like even the slightest, criticism they go all <laughs> out like Ugh. I, I, I no, well, you know is that that's that's usually what happens when you go on the internet suddenly everybody has an opinion <laughs> and it's the correct one and if somebody doesn't agree with you they are going to fight you until they make you agree with with them <laughs> no see that's the thing i that's, like, actually yeah. like talking to people who disagree with me because like there are times where, like, if I have a discussion with someone that holds a different opinion than mine, I can, even if we don't come to an agreement, it come to a mutual agreement on the subject, I can at least walk out of the conversation with a clearer mind. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, there, there was a discussion of opinions. And sometimes I will play devil's advocate in a, in a, in a, in a conversation just to get a discussion going. True. We, we do that on the I... show too. Yeah, I, I, I actually told Silver the first time that we interviewed him, uh, I told him, dude, the first time that I agreed with you in one of your videos was like episode 13. <laughs> but I don't care because your videos are so fun. And then we proceeded to have a very interesting conversation about our different opinions. And it was awesome. And every time that we review a comic or the TV show or anything, we every time that we have different opinions, those are the most interesting parts. Because yeah, we, that's we, the thing. we get we get each other's perspectives, and we come out of it enriched and more uh, with more information that we had before. We, but exactly, that's the, you need someone civile to be able to pull this off. Mm -hmm. You need someone like Silbert. You need someone like like right. you. You need someone like Doctor Wolf that knows how to put the point forward. Yeah, and uh, yeah, like, the, I think a lot of people, a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that um you can disagree and still have a healthy discussion. Like you don't have to agree with the person, but you guys can still have a good conversation without getting at each other's throats just because you know, there's a there's a difference of opinion. Because there can still be a nice exchange. Like as you said, we both walk out more enriched. True that, true that. And for for a good example is when we reviewed the siren for the Finship is Magic. Like, uh, I know that most of everyone on the NBS show didn't like that one. Sketchy, what's your opinion on it? Did, do you like it? What's your rating on the Finship is Magic for Sirens? Um, it definitely was one of the weaker. Um, it was definitely one of the weaker stories. But I would like me uh, when I did my collab with Toon Critic on on this series. Um. We had a disagreement over which one was the weakest. Like he thought the Cyrus one was the weakest, but I thought that the Nightmare Moon one was the weakest to me. But um, when it comes to the Sirens, um, I I like I knew who the writer and the artist was going was going to be, so I walked into this issue knowing that it wasn't going to be as serious as um Sombras or T Rex or Chrysalises. So I knew what I, I knew what I was getting into, and um. What I did like about it was that they took what they had and they rolled with it. They even took advantage of um, the cultural roots of sirens and kind of portrayed the entire comic as like a Greek myth. Because like you know how Greek myths like um, they would uh, come up with supernatural causes mm -hmm. for natural things. <laughs> and so for in the case of this comic, there was a supernatural cause for 
the emergence of different music genres, you know? Mm. Well, James, this is something that we didn't touch upon. <laughs> I didn't want to touch upon the comic because we all agreed that it was not the best and it was a very recording, a very long recording yeah. session anyway. But no, the, the, but no, I get, you know what, I absolutely, I absolutely agree with you and I can actually make, uh, we could actually make a case to say that, yeah, the Nightmare Moon comic might be the weakest of the bunch. Yeah, but, my, um, if only because it didn't bring anything interesting to the table, yeah, but, it kind of actually took away a lot. Yeah. But my, but, original, oh my like, god, a big, a big problem that I had, a big problem that I had with that issue was that, um, Dorin. the characters, like, don't, not, no, not even just her, but like, everybody in general, nobody, like, reacted to their situation. Like, for example, we open up, Nightmare Moon's banished to the moon, and like, she's like, oh, I'm here now. Like, she's not mad, she's not sad, like, she doesn't have any emotion other than, like, oh, I guess I messed up. So, like, huh. Uh, how about I, how about I take a stroll and, and see if I can find anybody here? Like, like, no, you just, you just tried to take over a country and lost a battle to someone that you consider to be your greatest rival, and you're not even the least bit salty about that? Uh, I don't know. And then, like, the whole thing where she tried to cause that whole riot, like, it was a good plan, but the whole thing of it happening in less than two pages and being resolved in less than two pages, and the, <laughs> The resolution having no clear explanation, I'm like, yeah. They, like they try, like they try to fit so much into a small window of time, and um, like T Rex issue had the same thing, but um, like the difference between that one and this one and T Rex is that they try to go beginning, middle, and end all in one small window, and you couldn't enjoy anything. The problem with T-Rex was that you enjoyed what was there, but there were parts that were left out and you want to see more, and it makes you mad that <laughs> it's only one issue. So, like, I would rather have something that I can enjoy that has parts missing than something that has all the parts together, but I can't enjoy anything of it, you know? So, in your in your final rating for the Finship is Magic comics, now that we are talking about this, <laughs> I need to know what will be your uh, rating, like from the lowest to the to the highest rated. Okay, here we go. All right, bottom Nightmare Moon, no questions asked. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next is the Sirens, then T Rex, mm -hmm. and then when I was choosing between Samba and Chrysalis, I had like such <laughs> a dilemma. Like, yeah, right. So. Now there were now I decided to make Sombra my top favorite and there were two main reasons for that. Firstly, prior to my reading prior to reading the issue, Sombra was my least favorite villain. I couldn't care less about Sombra at all. Like he like I felt like he was boring. Hmm. But then I read this issue and it suddenly make like for a for a story to make me care about a character that I previously couldn't care less about that's that that speaks volumes for the story itself and then the second thing that made me choose sombra over chrysalis was that the main flaw that chrysalis's comic had was that the main six were a distraction like i had no like it, it's been a it's been like a recurring problem with katie cook stories lately like with the good the bad and the ponies and then the root of the problem and now this one the main six are there when there really isn't any reason for them to be there. Like, the only two characters that needed to be there were Twilight, for obvious reasons, and Spike, because he was the one that asked about the story of Chrysalis's first con conquest to begin with. Mm -hmm. And plus, I think that the, with the main six's absence, it would have made the atmosphere a little more tense, because there is that animosity between Chrysalis and Twilight, because you can tell that Chrysalis has, like... She, she does not like Twilight. <laughs> like, she... Like, I would, I would go so far as to say that thanks to the events of the Cantalot wedding and the first comic arc, that Chrysalis now hates Twilight more than she hates Celestia. <laughs> really? You, so you cannot tell by the, <laughs> by the way that she has her dungeon decorated with pictures of Twilight stabbed in the eyes and all that. Was like... <laughs> My girl likes arts and crafts, what can I say? <laughs> That was a, that was a delightfully green dark comic. Mm. That one and the King Sombra one. Those uh, were great. You, you, uh, but yeah, yeah like, you know what? Like, you're like, now, now I'm waiting for 
Now I'm waiting for that Siege of the Crystal Empire arc to come out because it's being written by the same guy that wrote the Sombra the, the Sombra comic. Ooh, wow. But the art is being done by the art is being done by Andy Price. Not only is it a return of a person that did the Sombra comic, but it's a weird pairing because it's always been Katie Cook and Andy Price, but now it's Jeremy Whitley and Andy Price. So this I'm is, like, wow, I, I'm wow. shocked. Let's let's mix it up. Yeah. Like the Friends Forever series have taught us something is that if, when you mix it up, you can always end up with something amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, yeah, just like the Babs and Rarity <laughs> issue taught us. I'm like, wow, wasn't expecting was, it to be this good. Yep. That was great. That was great. Well, Discord and the Kitty Marcus Haders. <laughs> Ooh, that was fun. Yeah. Sketch. I, I need to say something. You you put uh, Sombra as your number one, right? Yeah. I was close. What made me change my mind to put Chrysalis at number one was that one scene where she swatted her own changeling into lava. Yeah, like, I love you, but if you mess up, it's a wrap. I'm going to kill you. You know, I, ne- I was never able to point what was the issue with the comic. I think you just you just clarified it. If it wasn't for the main six, if it wasn't for that one yeah. page where Rarity just talks about her date, if it wasn't like, for... I love, I love Star- Rarity. <laughs> I, I, I love Rarity so much. But She's best horse. I gotta She's call, awesome. Like, I, I gotta call BS when I see BS. And that, my friend, was BS. Wow. Like, I'm yeah, like, that no. Was, why are, that you, was why are you distracting us, Rarity? Mm-hmm. That was, have you ever watched mm-hmm. uh, 007 versus, uh, versus uh, The Man with the Golden Gun? No. No, there is one part, well, it's a James Bond movie, right? Mm-hmm. So there is one part in that movie where for 10 minutes, it literally turns into the Dukes of Hassan. <laughs> where there is this very stereotypical Texan sheriff who chases after James Bond, and then he's gone from the movie. Sliding over the car and everything. I think I yes. remember that. Sliding over the that's... car and everything. Yes, oh, yes, that's, I can't that's, remember that's that guy. Part. Yeah, and that was exactly the same thing that happens. When they cut to Rarity talking about her date in the middle of a comic where Queen Crystallis is talking about her exploits and her victories. I mean, what are you doing? You're not meant to do that. And uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. It loses focus. Mm, now that you mention it that way, I can see, yeah, because when we were reviewing it, I mentioned that scene to be kind of a comedy scene where just to get people to, you know, relax, you know, com- uh, put in some humor just to loosen the tension and then continue on but now that I think about it it would be much better in another comic where the changing have yeah it didn't fit like the moment itself in isolation is hilarious Mm -hmm. and like cause like it's plus like if you like if you follow the comics you know that the guy she was dating is one of Shining Armor's classmates so it kind of implies that Rarity is into older guys (laughs) granted that ruins my chances granted that ruins my chances with her but (laughs) but um (laughs) Uh, oh well, but like it's, well, that, it's definitely that a mean. good idea. But like, yeah, they picked the wrong place to put it, though. Mm-hmm. Diane, you're well, saying? at least it improves his James's chances then. <laughs> what did you mean? <laughs> she likes Walter Mare. Ah, uh, uh, never was I after her. I she likes. Her craft. I don't she like, her body. She likes older stallions. It's just the perfect opportunity. <laughs> So I don't have a chance ah. then. Oh boy. No, you don't have a chance either. Uh, what are you complaining that? about? You're an AJ fan. <laughs> but that's the yeah, thing is I that know. the comic, the, 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 that comic page could have fit on the, on the Rarity Micro or in any of the micros or any, in any of the Friends Forever. It doesn't belong on the Finship is Magic series. Mm-hmm, true that's, that. that's, that's, that's yeah. why I think it's uh, Katie Cook's sense of comedy or what, what she considers comedy is the same kind of writer instinct that decides to turn the, the dear, uh, the dear uh, story arc into Fern Gully Part Three. <laughs> Revenge uh, of the. No, it wasn't for. It, it was an episode of Captain Planet. That's what it was. <laughs> oh God, that was. That, that I even was. made a Captain Planet reference. I even played a. I even made a Captain Planet reference in my review. Like I used the clips from the Rainbow Power transformation and put the theme song <laughs> over it. No, I need to see this. <laughs> that is the absolute worst comic of the bunch. Like the the, the worst arc of all of all of them. Well, uh, no, nah, no, nah, I gotta give it to the West. I gotta give it to the Western one. The Western I, I one was definitely still, worse. I can still read the Wild West comic. The Wild West comic was really bad. It was really really bad. But I can still read that. I cannot read the the, the, the Revenge of Ever Free one. I'm sorry, it's insulting. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's for me, it's the it's the other way around. You know, like um, 
and it's and it's weird because I love AJ to death, and AJ is supposed to be like a um a central character in that arc, even though she wasn't that much. But um because like the issues with Twilight like kind of distracted from the entire thing. But I can like I can actually go and read um the deer arc, and it might be because I like just the idea of um their world. Hmm. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I hold that comic in high regard. You know, I love cowboys. I love westerns. <laughs> it's one of the things that grew on that uh, grew uh, that I grew up with. Uh, that continued to be with me after I was uh, after uh, I was young. Uh, even bad ones, I can still watch them. I can still enjoy them. The Deer arc was some Ted Turner, <laughs> Captain Planet BS that is it gets shoved on your throat halfway through. Uh. Like the the comic starts super well. It has probably one of the best intros ever because it, it's very spooky, very mysterious, and very interesting. And it and looks like that, great. That moment of mystique when you that you get when you first meet the kingdom. Yeah, of and it's, it's so like, wow! It like so like the, nice. that moment of awe when you first get introduced to it. Yeah, and you're like, wow, they have Lothlorien here in the Everfree Forest. This is so cool. What are they going to do with it? Oh, they're going <laughs> to make. Ah, uh, they're going to throw the uh, the oil tycoon stereotype uh, building uh, an amusement park. Oh, look at that! Equestria has bulldozers. Uh okay, fine. Um, how? I mean, they got police car. They got police cars. So <laughs> uh, it's, it's um it's beyond my control to try to like that comic. I I'm, I'm sorry, I can't. I can't. Uh, I'd rather read the Wild West arc twice. <laughs> Than even looking at the Revenge of Error Free comics. Although, um, when it comes to arcs that I dislike, even though, um, the, uh, Wild West arc had its problems, there are arcs that, um, that, like, there are all stories that I liked even more than those because, like, they were just, like, unmemorable. Like, uh, the first issue of the micro series, like, I couldn't stand that issue. Oh, you're talking about the Twilight Sparkle micro? Yeah, like oh, she, oh man, really? Yeah. Wow. This, why? This... Uh, yeah, just out of curiosity, why? It was just boring. Like it's one thing for me to have something to complain about for an issue, but if it just bores me, like, hmm. no. Like it gives you nothing to work with. You're like, oh my god, what is this? This is just so droning and boring. Mm, okay, I mean, yeah. Plus the I, art, uh... the art style didn't help either. Oh god, there is a story behind the art style. Uh, Thomas Taylor, who's the guy who also wrote the comic, when he did the art style, uh, when he did the sketch and then gave it to the colorist, who was not Heather Breckel for this one comic, and the colorist basically botched over the sketch lines that Tom Taylor gave to her. And oh, it's, really? yes, because when you compare the sketch to the final product, the sketch looks so much better than the final product that if you give it to someone else, it could have been a really good looking comic. As it, as it stands out, it has a very, is a comic with a very, uh, weird art style. But I still hold it dear to my heart because I think it's a very, very nice, very gentle story. Like, mm. all the, all the other main, all the other main characters, they have, uh, rather insane stories. <laughs> Twilight, who's the protagonist, gets the one that is this, the most slice of life. Like, it's so slice of life. That it's kind of like one of those uh, Japanese animes <laughs> that is like just a slice of life. What was the name of that one? Uh, that was. There's a lot of oh anime like that. I'm trying to think of one in particular that that, that but I cannot remember it. Eh, it's cool. It's cool. But uh, well, it seems that we found we found that James and Sketchy can talk for a long time about the comics and <laughs> reviewing. No, I mean, I yeah, th- we could though. We could though. Yeah. So, Dude, this all, this is awesome. <laughs> you should come over to talk about to talk with us on the show. Well, there's there's the there's that review that we're talking about that's going to be done soon. So yeah, we can talk around that one. Yeah, I'm ho- I'm hoping I'll be available for that tomorrow. I'm still I'm still not even sure if I'm going to be available oh, to talk about the episode tomorrow. I hope I hope you can because it's going to be awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Silver's gonna be there too. <laughs> I'm just sitting here going, "Oh, the Doctor Who." <laughs> but anywho, but anywho. Although I'll probably like, judging from the opinions that I've seen about the episode, I'm probably gonna be in the minority. Oh wow, this is gonna be interesting because, fun fact, most of us have not shared our opinions, so this is going. going we are going in blind. 
Uh, I always see. good, mm-hmm. always good. <laughs> but anywho, but anywho, um, we've rambled on for a while now, and now we're on tape. So, guys, who's not me and James, any question for Sketchy? Huh. Well, I think you asked all the good questions. Could you save a couple so that Kyle can invite him on our show, maybe? Yeah, because I was actually thinking it'd be great to have you on, because it seems like you you can you talk you know, in the mouth like... of a dead horse. <laughs> Is that the phrase? No, I've just made up a phrase there. Oh, wow. I have no idea what you said, Kyle, but that sounds ridiculously actually, dark. I, I, I have another question, them. but I, I don't know if I am starting to hog uh, the microphone at this if, if any, If everyone else doesn't have a question, then uh, go ahead, James. Okay, uh, so uh, you mentioned before that when you focus too much on something that you can end up losing your passion for all that. So uh, if you were to move away from uh, MLP and stop reviewing uh, Pony episodes, what would you be reviewing? Like there's a lot of people that review anime instead of MLP <coughs> or, or live action shows. What, what would you be reviewing? I would probably go to more towards reviewing American animation because I think that since 2010 came around, we've been making a comeback, like with regular show and Steven Universe and like that, that new show coming out called We Bear Bears is looking pretty good too. So, um, if I were to like stop reviewing, um, MLP, I'll probably move on to other American animated shows. And even if I were to stop reviewing altogether, I've been like drawing and making my own comics before I even got into the reviewing scene, and I'll still be doing that af- after I leave, whenever that may be. That's good. That is actually a very good uh, alternative. That kind of it's kind of what helps you from keeping getting burnout because I have I do so much so many things. Hmm. True. And ponies, one thing, and we're just humans per se, and we like many things. Like personally, for me, I do like the Marvel animated series that's on well Disney XD. And they're good. I, I like them. And also, I do like Steven Universe. So that's another show, too. I won't say I'll review them because my knowledge on the show is not that much. But who knows? Probably I'll just talk about it by passing. Like, the song's awesome. I have a good, Steve, I have a good Steven Universe story, though. Oh. Because, um... Go ahead, man. Go ahead. I, like, I'm, dri- I'm driving home. Well, I wasn't driving. My friend was driving. We were on our way back from the movies. And... He plugs in the aux cord on his phone, and he plays a song, and then I hear the opening music to Stronger Than You, <laughs> and, like, I immediately lost it. Like, oh, my. Like, we rolled down the windows, we started singing. Like, oh, my God, it was crazy. Oh, wow. That is something you don't hear every day. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Steven, you was a good show, people. Go go watch it, go watch it. They're on season two now, so go watch it. Second it. <clears throat> But, but but anywho, we have two news that we have not talked. Do we want to glance on it, or should we just ignore them? No, dude, let's talk uh, about those news. Come sure, on. go ahead. All right. So, okay, uh, recently, Felicia Day celebrated her birthday, and on a picture on the Facebook, she posted a picture of her riding Pinkie Pie. Yay! Aww. Uh, but you guys do know who Felicia Day is, right? She's a BA. Please right? someone say something. <laughs> yeah, she was a, she's a part of the Geek and Sundry's YouTube channel. She appears a lot on Tabletop. Mm hmm. That, and she was on Buffy and also other shows. And, well, Man- uh, Holly Manhattan and Eureka and Charlie on, yeah, and Charlie from, on Supernatural. I, I don't know. I mean, my brain is derping right now because I, I'm with Kyle on this one. I just know her on the tabletop show. That's how I know her. But yeah, another celebrity enjoying ponies. Yay! We will soon yeah, have. Yeah, I wonder. Them all. I wonder. I wonder if um, Seth MacFarlane enjoys it, considering all the cameos that were in Ted too. <laughs> I don't know. Like more than any, more than any other Hasbro property or any other like property in general. Like there was so much MLP stuff in the background. Like I don't know if Seth Green convinced him to do it, but. I don't know with, with that one, right? Like, that's a whole lot of legal things behind it because you have, okay, you, they said that Ted the Bear was made by Hasbro, right? So that could be a factor there. And for, I don't know how to explain this because 
for one, I haven't seen. Yeah, because like, they even had like a bunch of people like um dressed up as because like they were they were the scene at Comic Con. So you see all these posters, like you see these Dragon Ball Z posters in the background. Ooh, you see a wow. bunch of people dressed up as different um cosplayers, as different uh characters, mm-hmm. like like some like they're chasing after someone disguised as Raphael. <laughs> like, oh wow, that is a whole lot of oof. Right now, I'm just that guy right there, the Ninja Turtle. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but no, well, talking about legal rights and whatnot, um, there's a book on Amazon. It's called Little Pony Drawing Book. And this is not your average uh, book that... How do I put this? It's not your fancy China shop book where it's just a sticker book of the ponies. This is a flesh book that you can get on Amazon. And the book that I'm looking at here is, well... From what I understand, it's a book of how to draw, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, it's a how to draw based on the uh, propor- proportions of MLP, but no using assets from the show. So it's it's like if uh, if suddenly one artist decides to make an, a, a book on how to draw on their own art style, and they use MLP uh, characters or MLP OCs as an example. So technically, it's I legal. could really use that. Yay. Te- technically, it's legal because it doesn't have the name My Little Pony, which belongs to Hasbro. Mm. But it's still something that you look at and you are like, "You see what you? I see what you did there." Yeah, but it, it makes you raise an eyebrow or three. Yeah, that, that's the thing yeah. there because there are, I think it's based on the same logic that there are a lot of uh, books titled How to Draw Furries, and like there are like a bunch of different books. Oh yeah, you yeah. Topomorphic animals. I own, yeah. I own several of them. I own a couple of uh, a couple of them as well. Uh, they are good to start with. Um, they are don't expect kind of like you know anatomical perfection or even original ideas. They will take you through the motions, but for the uninitiated, un- it's a good uh, a good stepping stone. Hmm. But yeah, you can do a lot. Al- yeah, it helps to get you down the basics of like the differences between each um uh gene- generic species, like the difference between cats and the difference between dog based species. Equines, which helps for MLP artists. And, um, once you have those basic tools, then you start to develop your own style. Hmm, alright. I'm not 100% sure because most of the books here, well, okay, it's, it looks like it's targeted for kids, but the, some of the books that I'm looking at here is like Little Pony Coloring Book. Is it how to color or is it a book? Mm-hmm. Uh, just a coloring book, so yeah. Usually, coloring books are titled like that, so yeah, expect uh, expect it to be yeah. big black lines mm. that you have to fill inside. Yeah, but well, if this is a good way, to I don't want to color inside the lines. <laughs> Take outside the box. <laughs> yeah. But this is. <laughs> I will color on the line. <laughs> oh, fight the system, you rebel, you. <laughs> Someone start playing uh, Fight the Power. Uh, roll, roll, fight the power. Uh, but hey, it's a good the, way to start. Uh, I know that P- Pixel Kid has wanted to do one of those coloring books, and I was looking forward to the idea, but then she decided to take a hiatus, and I'm like, oh. Uh, well, at least this exists. This exists, and well, if you're interested, you can find them on Amazon. The links are in the show notes. But anywho, we've passed our normal recording time and almost going to overtime. Anywho, uh, I am going to wrap this up unless anyone else got any questions, including you, Sketchy. Not a question, but just a notion. I really had a lot of fun here today, guys. Definitely a great experience. Like uh, Again, I'm really hoping that I'll be able to be here uh, tomorrow to uh, do the Slice of Life review because it's, it's definitely been a blast chatting with you guys. And, Aww. like, you know, if you ever, if y'all ever need me, holla at me. We'll do, so, man, we'll do. Just, just give me a shout. You know what? I can tell you, these interviews and these podcasts are as good as the people that we do them with. Indeed. So if it was a blast to to talk with us, that was because the same way it was a blast to talk with you. Indeed, that's true. Well, thank you. And you're always welcome to come on. Like like my friends here, Kyle and Diane, who have been talking. <laughs> Yes, yeah, you guys here. are just hogging the spotlight. <laughs> we're just like, yeah, we're just going to enjoy this moment. I'm so sorry. Exactly. With There's you no guys, sense you mean, interrupting. With you guys, you mean just James. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Come on, no, let's be no. honest here now. I didn't shut up. 
But anywho, it's my it's my the bane of my existence. But Never shut up. I, I've spent the last three four weeks recording Kyle's podcast, and because I have to sit quietly and listen, I'm so used to not getting involved. Just like oh, I've got a head to, I need to catch up with it. I need to catch up with it. I have we're, we're, able to listen to we're, it. She's we're, just, just happy she doesn't have to listen to my voice for an hour. I just. <laughs> I just edited number six, and I've recorded number seven, <laughs> and only three of the episodes are live. Wow. And that's, so that's episodes one and two in the pilot, and it's like, oh, oh, there's so many. <laughs> uh. Uh, wow. Well, there's something to catch up to. But anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show Twitter account is at the MBS show. Sweetie Bot will tweet about this show, the guests that are on, and also by Emma Larson's book, Penny Royal Academy. You can also reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about stuff that interests me, toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And James, where can the public reach you? No, 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 don't make that joke, James. <laughs> Be a good boy. Be a good boy. It's okay, James. Um, if you don't say it, I'm going to say it. No! Oh, God. I see I see that I'm missing out on inside joke. Uh, Seriously, oh, you, how much did he pay you, Norman? I'm not joking. How much did he pay you? What, Larson? <laughs> yes, Larson. No, secret, secret, shh, secret. <laughs> uh, you... uh, uh, go to my DeviantArt, uh, that is jamescork.deviantart.com, or check my, my Ask Pony Tumblr on askmovieslate.tumblr.com. It's the place where I am most active lately anyway. You can find me there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Ro, what about you, man? You can find me at my DeviantArt, relicious.deviantart.com, or my Twitter at relicious underscore art. Sugar, what about you? You will find me doing all the preparation work for Midnight Scratch Creative Vibes on the Highland Bronies Facebook page, YouTube, Twitter, and wherever else happens to be Highland Bronies. <laughs> uh, and Kyle, what about you, man? Uh, the exact same links, but there's also my official Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Kyle McCall. Awesome, awesome. And sketchy, awesome guests. Where can the public find you? Well, other than the, other than the YouTubes, you can also find me on Tumblr, posting like funny little things on there and sharing some of my MLP related art. But if you want all my artwork, you can find me on DeviantArt on Boot Elite 5 at D- dot deviantart.com. And I'll, I'm also open for commissions and stuff like that. And support me on Patreon if you want to. Yay! Do it. He's an awesome guy. You should do it. You should do it. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. You can also catch us on PonyVLive.com. Links are in the show notes. And I have been Norman Sanzo. And I have been James Cork. Hi, I'm Relicious. I'm Sugar Dove. I've been Kyle McCall. I've been and will still be sketching the changeling. And we'll catch you next week with Tink Bring Tink. Funny comeback. Nothing. Bro, take us out. And we'll see you in the next podcast. Bye-bye. Bye. I will take you out. Keep a sketchy, folks. Keep a sketchy, folks.